Shalom guys, welcome back to another episode here at Just Shav Your Ministries with Casa de Israel. Today we're going to talk about uh, Passover and first fruits. Uh, but before we get started, we're going to do a quick little session that we started last video. I got a lot of mixed reviews, uh, mainly from Ariana. She said that my jokes are not good. So I have another joke for this video that I found and I'm going to do it. So it says... I was thinking about how people seem to read the Bible a whole lot more as they get older. Then it dawned on me. They are cramming for their final exam. So, like I always say, please like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. So, like I said, we're going to talk about Passover. So, we are in the beginning of the feast of the Lord. And in the Bible, it has the Moedim, the appointed times in which God himself said, these are the times that I want you guys to come and be with me. Right? And you will bring your first fruits. And I will be uh, explaining a little bit of the Passover itself, which is one of the appointed times. Uh, of Adonai and so we have Passover on leavened bread and in between these there is the first fruits so let's get started so Passover and first fruits the threshold covenant right so we're gonna talk about a little bit about the threshold covenant and it's important so the Lord said to Moses in Exodus 12 and Aaron in Egypt the month is to be for you the first month of the first month of your year Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of the month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share it once their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of people there are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be a year old. Uh, males without defect and you may take them from the sheep of the goats take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides of the tops of the door frames of the house where they are eat the land that same night they are to eat meat roasted over the fire along with the bitter herbs the bread made without yeast do not eat the meal raw or boiled raw or boiled it with water but roast it over fire with the head and legs internal organs do not leave any of it till morning if anyone or someone is left till morning you must burn it this is how you are to eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand eat it in a haste it is the lord's passover so this is what passover is it is not easter easter is something else just to clarify but we're not gonna talk about that today on the same night i will pass through egypt and strike down every firstborn both people and animals and i will bring judgment on all the gods of egypt i am adonai the blood will be assigned for you on the house where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you no destructive plague will touch you when i strike egypt we have to understand that the context of the of the passover is israel being redeemed from egypt from the oppression of pharaoh and his determination to oppress them to demonstrate his power over uh, adonai but adonai himself is basically destroying every uh, idea, mythological, cosmological identity that Egypt has associated with nature itself. And Adonai himself is not only controlling it because he is the sole creator, but he is exempting e Israel from suffering these plagues, making a statement that they are the ones with the true God in uh, Egypt. Altar. Now, we have to find the definition of an altar because altars are very important, okay? Altar is usually raised structure, a place in which sacrifices are offered or incense is burnt. In worship, often used figuratively to describe a thing even uh, given 
uh, a greater indual precedence or value, especially at the cost of something else. The earliest altar was the family altar. Okay, the earliest altar of the family would seem to have been the threshold or door seal or entranceway of the home uh, or dwelling place. Houses are believed to precede temples in houses. Uh, house fathers were the earliest priests. So it's very interesting because you might think that the most important aspect of ancient times were temples. But the author of the article, which I will put in the description for sure, which is the threshold covenant, um, he explains that before there was temples, the, the main uh, in the essence of it was the doorway and the home and the family and the father was the priest. And so that was the beginning of everything. And then it evolved to a place where you will go and worship God. Uh, and it's, it is something that it was in other uh, communities and nations. The sacrifices for the family were offered within or at the entrance of the family home. So this is an example. As you can see here, you will see the, the this line right here, which will be where you would uh, place the blood of the sacrifice. And, and it's very specific. Like I said, I will tag or, or link the article that I have read for this. And then it will tell you how the blood was poured here. And then some of the blood was poured here. And then obviously the pass over was stepping over this line. Okay, but I'm not going to get ahead, which I kind of did. But let's keep going. So crossing the threshold or entrance uh, or entering the door of a house, it's in itself an implied covenant with those who are within. So this was, again, ancient custom understanding what Ezra is doing. So it wasn't something that Adonai just came up with out of the bloom. It was something that they understood culturally that was done. But now Adonai was going to give it a twist and a, a, a deeper meaning to what they're doing. OK, the essence was once Egypt uh, is going to be destroyed and the ones that obey God are the ones that are going to be redeemed. That's the focus. Redemption, being freed from slavery or oppression because you are being represented by God. Examples of this, are uh, we can see the blood welcome at the threshold abound in modern Egyptian customs. When the new uh, Kediv, Kediv uh, which is a governor in Egypt came to his palace in, in 1882 a threshold sacrifice was offered uh, in his welcome at the entrance of the palace six buffaloes were slaughtered to uh, being killed just at the governor's chariot reach gateway so you see now with these uh, registries in in time and in history that the custom lives and is something that is very prominent in in, in ancient history and in Eastern communities, okay. In Egypt, also, if you buy a uh, which is like a boat, uh, and therefore are to cross its threshold for occupancy of the new home in the water. So, this boat, which could be somewhere where you would live or uh, reside while you're in the water, when you bought it, you would do the same thing you must kill uh, a sheep, letting the blood flow on the deck. Or side of the boat in order that it may be lucky and your friends will afterwards have to dine with you with that sheep to eat that sheep so again the concept is is, is not something completely new that is the point that I'm trying to make right it's, it is something that they understood that they visually uh, had a an idea of what it was but now Adonai is giving it a different distinction and is giving it an identity for the people to understand that in that day that moment once that land was offered and it was placed on the threshold uh, and on the basin and on the on the uh, lintels of the house god himself is the one that is being not only invited in because it says that it will pass over and that the the the, the angel of death will not come into the house but in the Hebrew itself, it is more than that. It's not so much that he will pass over and not go into the house. It is that he will go into the house, but that once he saw the blood, he was welcome. And that covenant be between him and the people was ratified. And now they were basically redeemed through that blood. So that blood identified them as people that were redeemed by that God. And death was not going to affect that home. So in Russia, this is something, a fun fact that I found says receiving an honored guest with bread and salt at the threshold of a house he enters is common in russia bread and salt are symbolic and primitive throughout uh of flesh and blood i didn't know that so hey i wanted to share that 
Now, this is interesting because it says to step over or cross the blood, it's, uh, it's a substitute on the door seal, is to accept and ratify a preferred covenant. But to trample upon the symbol of the covenant is to show contempt for the host who has proffered it and no create no greater indignity than this is known in the realm of primitive so social intercourse. You will step over it. That will represent that you had a covenant and will ratify. Right. So the people that did this for Israel in Egypt were saying that we are in covenant, not with Egypt, not with these gods anymore. We're in covenant with your the 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 one that is going to redeem us from this bondage and slavery. And so as the blood was poured, everything was followed to the to you that Adonai uh, uh, explained they were in covenant so not only were they protected from the angel of death but they were in a covenantal relationship starting from that moment on and what redeemed them and saved them from death was obedience the threshold as the family altar the threshold as the family altar on which the sacrificial blood of the covenant uh, welcome is poured out is counted sacred and it is not to be stepped upon or passed over lightly but is to be crossed over reverently as in recognition of him to whom all life belongs when the first passover took place during israel's exodus from egypt the lamb was required we saw how god told moses that the blood of the lamb would be a sign for the house where you are exodus tell the whole community of israel that on the 10th day of the month each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for the whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of people they are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed according with each person that will eat. Again, the emphasis is family, lamb, father, leading this, right? That was the unification of the redemption, meaning that the lamb was one step, but the father and the family had to go through this process to accept that redemption. If they did not do that, then they will not be redeemed, right? If they don't do the blood, they're not redeemed. The angel of death will come into the house and those people would have, uh, the, the firstborn would have died. And so the idea that the man and the family had to embrace this command to an extent, this instruction, right? Which could be labeled as Torah or uh, the... Adonai as, as guidance to the salvation that they were uh, about to ensue. So we're going to jump into what New Testament and our times uh, give us. And there's a little bit. This could be like a, a this is part one. I'll be honest. There's a lot of information that I did not share because it is so much. But this is what the prophet Isaiah says. It says, and we understand the story, right? The story is that they were redeemed. They go into the desert. They're given the Torah. They're given the instructions. They're given the, the, the opportunity to honor God. And they disobey. They dishonor God down the road, as we will read in the Torah portions. And uh, generations come. Kingdoms come. Kings come. And Israel stumbles. Okay? And so it gets to a point where they are rejected. They are casted out. They're separated because of their disobedience. But the prophets say this. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to a slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was caught off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. So now it's talking about the Messiah. right? So again, element of the Passover is family, covenant. Adonai is the center. And your acceptance of that covenant is ratified by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so for you to accept Adonai's instructions and obedience, you have to go through the process of the lamb being offered in Egypt. And here, 
The people have been casted out, so they have no way to come back of their rebellion. But here it says that there will come a man or a chosen one that will be uh, the one that will redeem the people. And it's something that is believed in the faith of, obviously, Christians and in Israel himself and Judaism. And so Yeshua is what we believe is that the Lamb of Redemption, Yeshua went willingly as a lamb, led to the slaughter, to the place of sacrifice, to redeem his people. There's not only a lamb for the person and a lamb for the family, but there's a lamb for the people, the nation, the world. Okay. And Yeshua said these words, and it's a condition that the people have. Okay. That when he came, it's very interesting, right? Because when Moses was in Egypt, um, Moses was chosen. He went to the people. He represented Adonai. He did miracles. And the people obey Moses. And because of their obedience to Moses, they were redeemed, you know, through the lamb. Right, because remember, if they don't do the lamb, the firstborn of that home would have died as well. And so, the 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 the, the prophecy that there will be a prophet like Moses is fulfilled with Yeshua. But when Yeshua comes, a total reaction happens because Israel in the time of Yeshua is being oppressed, just like the people of Israel were oppressed in Egypt. They were being oppressed by Rome, and uh, the people in the middle of Yeshua's words. And miracles, instead of accepting him and embracing him, they rejected him. And it's very interesting because whenever, before he goes into the to the city and before he's uh, offered and before he gives himself and does the meal, the Passover meal, he says these words. And it's something that is looked over, but he in his heart says this. And he says, as he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he wept over it. And he said, if you, even you, had only known this day, what will bring you peace but now it is hidden from your eyes and there was a a moment of sadness because they had an opportunity to have the redemption in that moment but they rejected it but it was the moment where he said now it's hidden from you and it's going to be open to other people but i want us to read because i'm going to read this because i think it's very important for us to have this in our mind and, and see why he's saying what he's saying and how he got to that, especially in the context of everything. Okay. Because the idea of separating and, 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 and closing in the blessings that we have, remember Israel is called to be a light to the nation. So you do you, the idea is for you to protect the holiness, but not reject those that want to come in. And so in the process of you protecting holiness, if you reject, then you are missing the mark. Okay. Now, so Luke chapter 19 says the following. He entered Jericho and passing through, and there was a man called uh, Sechaius. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Sechaius was trying to see who Jesus was and was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into his sycamore tree in order to see him. For he was about to pass through that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up again and said to him, Sechaius, hurry and come down. For today I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down and received them gladly. When they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, He has gone to the guest of a man who is a sinner. Sechaius stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, uh, half of my possession I will give to the poor, and I have defrauded anyone of anything i will give back four times as much and jesus said to him today salvation has come to your house because he to it he too is a son of abraham so that the focus here was that the, no matter what that tax collector was labeled as he was still the son of abraham and yeshua said i will be in your home as well for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. While they were listening to these things, Jesus went to, the, to tell the parable because he was near Jerusalem and they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. So he said, a noble man went to a distant country and received the kingdom for himself and then returned. And he called 10 of his slaves and gave them 10 minas and said to them, do business with this until I come back. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying we do not want this man to reign over us 
When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that the slaves to whom he had given the money be called to him so that he might know what business they had done. The first appears saying, Master, your mina has been has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good slave, because you have been faithful in a very little thing, and you are to be in authority over ten cities. The second came saying, Your mina, master, has made five minas. And he said to him also, you are to be over five cities. And another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I kept and put it away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you are an ex exciting man. You take up what you did not lay down and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, by your words, I will judge you, you worthless slave. Did you know that I am an exciting man taking up what I did not lay down and repay, re reaping what I did not sow? Then... Why did you not put my money in the bank? And having come, I would have collected it with interest. Then he said to the bystanders, Take the mina away from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Master, he has ten minas already. And he said, I tell you that to everyone who has, more shall it be given. But from the one who does not have, even what he has does shall be taken away. But though well, this enemy of mine who did not want me to reign over them bring them here and slay them in my presence after he had said these things he was going ahead and going up to jerusalem and when he approached bethany Pech, and bethany near the mount that is called olivet he sent two of the disciples saying go into the village ahead of you there as you enter you will find a colt tied which no one yet has ever set Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, you shall say the Lord has needed it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said the Lord has needed it. They brought it to Yeshua or Jesus and they threw their coats on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he was going, they were spreading their coats on the road. And as soon as he was approaching near the de descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in the heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Yeshua answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. When he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace, but now they have been hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you in on every side. And they will level you to the ground and your children within you. They will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The first fruits. In the Torah, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land which I am going to give you and reap the harvest, then you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord you, for you to be accepted. On the day after the Shabbat, the priest shall wave it. Now, on the day when you wave the sheaf, you shall offer a male lamb, one year old, without defect, for the burnt offering to the Lord. If the grain offering, you shall then be two tenths of an ephah of a fine flour mixed with oil and offering by fire to the Lord for a soothing aroma with its drink offering, a fourth of a hem of wine until the same day and until you have brought in the offering of your God. You shall eat either bread, nor roasted grain, nor new growth. It is to be a perpetual statue throughout your generations in all your dwelling places. During the Feast of the Bread, at the end of the Sabbath, which fell on a Passover, people were delegated to go after sunset into a different barley field with sickles and obtain samples of each field. The barley for the Passover fruits offering Rashid was laid together with a sheaf, literally an omer, or approximately four dry quarts, and brought to the court of the temple. There, the grain was uh, wine, wine wed, preached, 
parched and bruised in mortar. The next morning, after some incense had been sprinkled on the sheep, the priest waved it before the Lord towards the four different points of compass. He then took part of the grain and threw it into the fire altar. Once the offering was uh, accepted, the remainder of the harvest was then acceptable before Adonai. Passover had begun when Yeshua died. And the third day earlier that Sunday morning, the priests were in the temple offering the first fruit to the harvest. At the very time our Messiah and high priest was raised from the dead, offering up himself as our atonement. In so doing, he became the first fruit of the rest of the harvest of believers in him. But now Messiah has been raised from the dead. The first fruit of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Messiah all will be made alive. But each in his own order. Messiah, the first fruit after that, those who are in Messiah at his coming. On the first day of the week, Yeshua was raised bodily from the dead. To fulfill the symbolism of the yearly festival which falls within the days of unleavened bread. As Passover pictures Messiah as the lamb who was slain, first fruit pictures the Messiah who was raised up as a first fruit in whom alone those who are asleep will be made alive. The idea is that at first the concept was family, house, threshold, covenant, altar. That was the temple, the home. And then eventually a, a, a dwelling place was presented to the people so that they can understand and envision what is like to have God amongst you and what does God require? What is the standard? And now after everything was built, after a home was built beautifully with details, even though it was a beautiful structure, the man itself since to the point where it invalidated that dwelling place. Now, the idea is that at some point, a temple will be rebuilt. But the end goal is not so much a structure. It is God's presence on all earth. And Yeshua gives us that open, right? Yeshua as the lamb for Passover, symbolically, his blood that was basically shed for us to have access so that death will not come in. Final death, at least. But resurrection, that blood was giving us access to the Father, to the covenant, to the redemption. Yeshua himself gave us the ability to not only learn about God's house, but how do we as men and women dedicate our home and our families so that we are redeemed through him. And we have access to that kingdom and we bring uni unity to the body. Yeshua said that that man that was a tax collector that wanted to repent or to do his best to be redeemed was the son of Abraham. Meaning that it's not about just the people of Israel. It's about Israel being a light to the nations. We're supposed to bring more people. We're supposed to show and demonstrate that God is the God of creation, the true God. Because if we don't show it, nobody will find out. And so... We can either demonstrate it and be inclusive or we can be so holy that we push people away and restrict. And so you can be as holy as you can. But if you only have the same mina, the same coin, the same drachma, the same talent that God gave you, it was meaningless because the point is to multiply that. So that coin of holiness, that, that ability to be separated, you help others separate themselves for other night. And so, we have been redeemed, and the king has been raised. The prince of peace has been lifted from the dead by his king. And that king has said that on earth, Yeshua our Messiah will be king, and we shall rejoice. So, uh, that's all I have for this week, or for this uh, biblical cycle for Passover. Next year, we'll do part two of this. I'll, 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 I'll hold myself to it. Uh, and so, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great, had a great pass, Passover because by the time I upload this, it's going to be a past, Passover Eve and day. Um, and I hope you guys have a great Unleavened Bread week. And let's count the, the Omer. I'll put the video 
I have a video here for the Omer and what's the importance of it. So, uh, hope you guys have a beautiful uh, couple of weeks, days. Uh, enjoy with your families. The king is coming and he is alive. So, have a great week. Shavuot and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.